Living in rural America was full of challenges throughout the earliest part of the 20th century, having food harvesting and preservation leading the way. Finding a way to keep food cold where the ice wagon didn't run was a challenge. That was until 1923, when Australian inventor Sir Edward Hailstrom invented the gas absorption refrigerator, which would be the first unit of its kind to operate without electricity while being able to produce temperatures as cold as 27 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 2 degrees Celsius. David Forbes Keith of Canada filed the first patent for the Icy Ball in 1927. In 1929, American manufacturer Powell Crosley acquired the Icy Ball's patent. The Crosley Icy Ball was popular throughout the 1930s and into the 1940s until Depression-era programs such as the Rural Electrification Administration began bringing electricity to rural America. In 1934, less than 11% of U.S. farms had electricity. The Crosley Icy Ball refrigerator consisted of several components. The three main ones were the icy ball itself, which were two balls connected by a U-shaped pipe. One ball was for cooling, the other for heating. These two balls contained a sealed mixture of deadly ammonia and water. Inside the homeowner's kitchen was a top-opening white insulated box resembling a small non-electric freezer chest. Outside of the home, there was a small kerosene burner and a galvanized pail for heating and cooling the icy ball unit. Daily, the galvanized pail would be filled with water and the cold side of the icy ball would be placed within it. The hot side of the icy ball was then heated by a kerosene burner which contained a pre-measured amount of kerosene, roughly one cup per day. The unit would then be heated for roughly 90 minutes. Once the kerosene was burned out, the unit was ready for cooling. As the hot ball was heated slowly on a low flame, the process began of boiling off ammonia dissolved in the water inside the icy ball unit itself. The pressure in the system rose to around 250 pounds per square inch. At this temperature, the ammonia readily passed through the U-tube, condensing into the cooler ball, which was kept cool by the water in the galvanized pail. When the cool ball was fully charged with liquid ammonia, a small whistle was activated, much like one found in a tea kettle. The icy ball was then turned around placing the hot ball into the cool water. As the hot ball cooled, the pressure in the unit falls, eventually dropping to the point where the liquid ammonia in the cold ball begins to evaporate, making the cold ball begin to freeze. After several minutes, the cold side of the icy ball was cool enough for ice to begin forming on the outside of the ball. The icy ball would then be carried into the house and placed inside the white box, which contained the food that one wished to refrigerate. While the icy ball originally brought cold food storage to those in the country, its life as a camper's tool continued on for many years after electricity replaced it in the home. To see an example of Crosley's icy ball and hear more about its uses, please visit the Knowlton Ice Museum of North America in Port Huron, Michigan. For Moment in History's Museum Mysteries, I'm Chris Troy, reminding you that history that lives in all of us.